Hello and welcome back to Football Talks. Sir Tom Finney, a man who shouldn't have needed any introduction, but here we are making a video to remind people of the great Sir Tom Finney, who now seems to be forgotten. Well, let's begin the video and celebrate the hero of England and the player who many consider the best ever. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Tom Finney. Sir Tom Finney, who passed on age 91, was perhaps the most complete British footballer of all time. Yet he failed to win a single major honour for either club or country. While blessed with exquisite balance, skill and tactical intelligence, he played the game with grace. Given to very few, he was never booked, sent off or even ticked off by the referees. Stanley Matthews may have been the public's favourite, but to purists, Finney was the greatest all-rounder. In the era of the maximum wage and before players enjoyed the freedom of contract, there were many single club players. So integral did Finney become to Preston North End, staying there from an age of 14, that when the club virtually went with him, relegated to the second division, never to return. For the next 24 years, the most gifted player to pull on a Preston shirt dazzled, amazed and astonished audiences with his brilliance. He made mugs of some of the planet's finest defenders with his sublime footwork. But he wasn't just a wizard of the dribble. He created and scored some virtually impossible goals for both PNE and England. He played in all five positions on the forward line. In many people's eyes, he became the most complete British footballer of all time. It was such a shame that Finney was 24 before he was able to make his league debut for Preston. Six years and World War after signing his first pro contract with the club, had Hitler not intervened, football would have seen a lot more of his magic than the 472 North End games and 76 international caps he managed to cram in before retirement in 1960, at the age of 38. His brilliance inspired and often carried his team. Billy Shankly, an established right half for Preston when Finney joined and later the manager of Liverpool, said of his friend Tom Finney, get in any team, in any match and in any age, even if he had been wearing an overcoat. It was classic Shankly, though few who saw Finney play would disagree with the sentiment. Sir Tom Finney had a glittering career, but little silverware to show for it. The price he paid for loyalty. The only medals he collected were for the 1941 Wartime Cup, not regarded as a full football honour when Preston beat Arsenal 2-1 in the 1951 Second Division Championship. He even remained loyal to Preston when the Italian prince Roberto Lanza di Trabia made him an unimaginable offer to play for his team, Palermo, in Sicily. The prince had seen Finney play for England while they were touring Italy in 1952 and was so impressed he offered him a 10,000 signing bonus, wages of 130 euros per month and a bonus of up to 100 euros a game, a villa, a sports car and unlimited travel to and from Italy for his family. At this time, Finney was earning 14 euros a week with Preston, reduced to 12 euros in the summer, close season as usual, plus a bonus of 2 for a win and 1 for a draw. To top up his wages, England's best footballer ran a plumbing business on the side the club refused the transfer outright even when a 30,000 euro fee was offered as compensation. Its desperation to hold on to Finney became apparent just a year after he retired. Deprived of its most inspirational figure, this historic small town club found the members of the Football League in 1888 and its first ever champions went into long term decline. Finney was born a street away from Deedal, the home of the club he would come to embody. He was a slight sickly boy hampered by an infected gland on his neck. It was removed when he was 14 and shortly afterward, he gained a trial with Preston. Despite standing at just 4 feet 9 inches and weighing less than 5 stone, he was offered a contract to join ground staff. But his father insisted that he learn a trade. So he signed instead as an amateur part-time and became an apprentice plumber, an occupation that would run parallel with and outclass his football career and lead to his nickname, the Preston Plumber. Finney turned professional just after a week of the outbreak of the Second World War which would steal years from his career. He had two excellent feet, a natural left footer who had began as an inside left, he was switched by Preston to the right wing. During the war, he served with the Royal Armoured Corps and was a tank driver in North Africa and Italy, where he took part in the battle to capture 
Argenta in April 1945. He was also selected to play for several forces sides in Egypt. Sir Tom Finney was given a relatively quick discharge from the army not to play football but because plumbers were needed to help with the reconstruction. He made his long delayed league debut for Preston at the age of 24 against Leeds United on 31st August 1946. It was the first of 473 competitive appearances for the club in which he scored 210 goals. Many comparisons were made between Finney and Matthews, whom he initially displaced on England's right wing. Matthews was a showman, dubbed the Wizard of the Dribble, an out-and-out -out winger who would hug the touchline. Finney was more versatile, playing in all five forward positions over the course of his career, and could still score as well as create goals. In his autobiography, The Way It Was, published just after his death in 2000, Matthews wrote, To dictate the pace and course of a game, a player has to be blessed with awesome qualities. Those who have accomplished it on a regular basis could be counted on fingers of one hand. Pele, Maradona, George Best, Di Stefano and Tom Finney. Finney made his England debut in a 7-2 trouncing of Northern Ireland in 1946, the first of 76 appearances in which he scored 30 goals, then a record. England looked strongest when both wingers were deployed, with Matthews on the right and the versatile Finn playing out on the left position. The first time they played this way was in March, sorry. The first time they played this way was in May 1947 in Lisbon against Portugal, who were due to 10 nil. Matthews was irresistible, but Finney was in such devastating form that his direct opponent, the Portuguese captain and right back Alvaro Cardozo, walked off the field in the first half, demanding to be substituted and would never play for his country again. A year later, the pair outclassed Italy in Turin. Finney Cutting in to score the last two English goals in a 4-0 humiliation of holders of the World Cup last competed for in 1938. Sir Tom Finney appeared in three World Cups, though none was truly satisfactory. The Imperious England Football Association had not entered the first three tournaments. Had not entered the first three tournaments before the war. England beat the Chile side in their first game, but then lost 1-0 to the US, a team of part-timers. The team then lost their final group game, also 1-0 to Spain, and were knocked out. In 1954, Switzerland, Finney helped England reach the quarter-finals and scored their second goal when they lost 4-2 to Uruguay. Four years later, in Sweden, he was injured in the opening match against the Soviet Union, which put him out of the England's disappointing tournament. Despite his injury, Finney stayed on the field to put away the penalty that gave England a 2-2 draw. Finney's personal milestones included being named Football of the Year in 1954 at the age of 32. He collected the award on the eve of the FA Cup final, a game for which he and much of the nation hoped he would finally obtain a winner's medal. Normally, so at home at Wembley, played what he had later described as his worst game ever for Preston, as they lost 3-2 to West Brom. In 1956, a new Preston manager, Cliff Britton, moved Finney to a deep-lying centre-forward position, making use of his balanced passing ability to glide past players. Finney was able to play a more pivotal role in the team. He was a revelation, playing some of the best football of his life, and in 1957 became the first player to be voted English Footballer of the Year for a second time. That season, he scored 27 goals in 40 games as Preston, usually to be found mid-table, finished third in the league. The following season, he scored 26 goals and the team were runners-up. They dropped to 12th in the 1958-59 season when he was able to play only 16 league games for half a dozen goals. Throughout his career, Finney continued to build up his plumbing business, which was very much a going concern by the time he had retired in 1960. This was when he completed a season in, in which he played 43 games, scoring 21 goals. Later on, he became the president of the club, a magistrate and chairman of his local health authority. And at last, in 1998, he was knighted for the years of service to his country. In a few sad years since his passing, eloquent tribute have been paid to the greatness have been paid to his greatness as a footballer. And Finney deserved every one of them. 76 caps, 30 international goals, 473 games, and 210 goals for Preston North End. The statistics alone are testimony to a rare and precious talent. The people who had watched him as children were only vaguely aware of his merit, but the old ones, people who knew and loved the game, would unfailingly declare him the finest player English football has ever known. Yet Finney was something more than that. 
He embodied all of those virtues which once were rebel: modesty, courtesy, shining decency, and an instinctive nobility. He saw himself as an ordinary man of no special virtue, a man fortunate to enjoy the ability to play the game he adored, and his gratitude for that endured through his 91 years. Well, I would not like to end this video on a sad note while celebrating one of the greats of the game, and therefore I would bid you adieu for the day, and that is it for today's video.